What's up, everybody? We're uh, live here for another live stream on the Live to Roll channel. I just wanted to uh, say what's up and introduce the topic this week again, guys. We're going to be doing bowel care, and this is my friend Tom here with us again. Uh, what's up, everybody? And Thanks for uh, that, Sean. Of course, Tom. You're the man, bro. <laughs> uh, and then we're also going to be bringing in my friend Bobby in a little bit here. Um, he's going to also join us for the stream. He has um, um, He's recently switched over to using a colostomy bag, so he's going to be covering some of those topics. But for now, um, we'll just do a quick intro like we did last week. Like everybody, you guys probably know me. My name's Sean. I'm a C56 quadriplegic. Um, got injured 16 years ago in a snowboarding accident. And uh, this is my friend Tom. Tom, introduce Hey, man. Or, hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Tom. I'm a C56 quad. I've been injured for 23 years. Um, and yeah, live in SoCal. Uh, you know, living that quad life. And uh, yeah, here to talk about some stuff. Sweet, dude. Yeah, it's not the funnest subject to talk about, as everybody knows, you know, nobody really wants to talk about poop, but, you know, it is a big part of our life, and honestly, like what me and Tom were talking about before we started here, is that everyone, you know, if you think initially, people think, you know, oh, like walking, it's so, like, that's what paralysis is, you know, like, but really the physical part of paralysis is like, that's the easiest part to overcome. The bowel and bladder control is the hardest, especially bowel, bowel control is seriously, like the worst thing to deal with really that we have to deal with. Um, it's no fun. <laughs> There's no really great way that, that works. Um, everything has pros and cons, you know, ups and downs. So we're gonna kind of just basically, basically break down what are some of the ways that we do it. Uh, Cause we actually, me, Tom and Bobby, who's gonna be joining us all do different things and have tried different things. So we're gonna share some of our experiences and just let you guys know you know, like what we have found that worked for us and what might work for you and the stuff in the future. And then as far as questions and comments and stuff, you guys, um, just we're going to I'm going to try to get to them. If I don't get to you right away, uh, I'll we're going to come back to the comments and stuff and we're going to answer everybody's questions and things like that, too. So if you can't have your questions, please leave them in the comments uh, and say hi and anything like that. And uh, hi to everybody who has been saying hi and stuff. There's a few people already saying hi. So. Thank you guys What's for joining. Up, everybody? And hi, uh, welcome to the poop doc. <laughs> um, so I don't know, Tom, you want me to start? Subjects, no fun intended. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it is a shitty subject. No. <laughs> um, so I guess one so of the. You want to get started, bro? I guess we can kind of start with like bowel programs. So a bowel program is something that. Um, they kind of start you on in the hospital and a bowel program is basically a routine for you to do your bowels and that just makes it a lot easier for us to stay on a regular basis, a like regular routine. You know, some people do it daily, some people do it every other day, some people do it a few times and a week. And everybody has this, even able-bodied. Like and everybody guess, has that routine for that bathroom program, <laughs> especially that. And you know, when you get paralyzed, that all changes. So what they try to do at the start is establish a new routine and a new program that will hopefully provide like consistency for you. Exactly. Thank you for well put, Tom. Yeah, exactly. So everybody, able bodies, you guys all do your own thing. You have your. I know before I got hurt every morning, I woke up and I went to the bathroom, take a shower. It was pretty pretty on schedule, on routine. You know, some people have their coffee routine, cigarette, whatever it is that makes you do your thing. You know, but for us, it's a little more complicated. Um, a lot of things can go into that kind of stuff, like timing, like if you were, you know, like things like if you were a regular morning goer, like sometimes that's going to have, that carries over because your body does want to keep like some somewhat of that schedule. So like your bowels will get more active in the mornings, things like that. So you have to retrain your body if you're trying to train different times and stuff. Um, and one of the things that they use to, you know, stimulate a bowel program uh, well, there's a few options. One, suppositories. One are enemas or like uh, like mini enemas type of things. Um, and then other ways are just manual removal. Some people can feel it enough and manually retrieve it with their finger or uh, push it out like just on their own, like with, you know, internal pressure. 
Me personally, I use a suppository program, um, and and I um, and I do my program every other day. So that's like my that's how I've set up my schedule. I originally did it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which was conducive for me to uh, travel for rugby. That's what a lot of the rugby guys do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It opens up your weekends. But for me, I started having troubles with that Monday because the skipping two days was starting to get to my stomach, starting to get to, it just was, it was giving more complications, more constipation, more issues with bowel uh, blockages and stuff. So I switched it to every other day about a year ago and it's been um, working and helping for for me. That's, that's what I've found works well enough. Um, I still have my issues, definitely. Um, you know, diet can factor into that. If I eat something weird, if I eat at different times, if I, and you know, like a uh, new medication or something, antibiotics can mess it up for sure. Um, lots of stuff can, can factor into those. But, yeah, so, I mean, but, uh, what Sean, like kind of mentioned earlier is, I mean, we just, like you're paraplegic, quadriplegic, you lack the muscle control to, you know, keep yourself from having an accident, having a problem, right? Um, but also, um, you know, like help, like help yourself go. Now, um, so we use alternative, you know, things to help stimulate that, right? Uh, he said it before: suppositories, enemas, or even like digital stimulation. You know, like manual stimulation. Um, you know, can like stimulate the vagus nerve that can like cause you to start to go. And some people like that works perfect for them. I've been paralyzed my whole life, and. I was really young when I was injured, so I didn't really have like a regular routine that like I, you know, could go off of. I mean, I was four years old, so they just started me on. Uh, I, I did it for like ten years or so, same like suppository routine like every other night um, for like a long time. When I was 14 years old, I got surgery um, in my abdomen, like for my catheterizable stoma, but they took part of my small intestine. To do that, and after that surgery, my routine completely changed, and that's common for you know like any kind of gastrointestinal procedure. You know, like your body, you know, can just trigger changes. Um, that happened for me. So my I went from having like a very consistent, regular routine where you know I had very few accidents, and you know I just like didn't like it wasn't difficult to manage to like being 14 years old and like having problems every day or every other day. And it was just a nightmare. So I switched from an every other day routine to a daily routine. And I switched from suppositories to enemies, which are mini enemas. Now you can Google it, but it's this solution called, uh, I'm not sure if you can look it up, Sean, but it's like called Ducasolate or something. And basically it's just a fluid that, um, it's like a small amount. Um, so that's why it's preferred over, you know, like other enemas, like fleet enemas or like larger amounts of saline solution. Um, and they're very good for a lot of people. They work for me for, gosh, I think I used the enemies for probably like six years um, until just before I moved out. Um, now they worked good and I still had the, you know, occasional problems more than I did when, you know, I was younger, but I just kind of wrote it off to like my body getting adjusted to something new. Um, it was still an issue for me though, and it never, I mean, whenever I would have an accident or a problem or like I wouldn't evacuate in the morning and I'd be stressed out that I'd have a problem later in the day because I had plans with friends, or, you know, plans like be out all day away from home and stuff. Um, the anxiety, the stress, the, you know, fear that came along with that was still too much for me and it bugged me and bogged me down all the time. Um, and I mean, honestly, it still can sometimes, um, you know, even to this day. But after I, you know, I was using the enemies with limited success on a daily routine, uh, I spoke to a gastroenterologist who specializes in like people with paralysis, and he gave me two recommendations. One, keep a food journal every day what I eat. It's really honestly super easy to do on your phone. I mean, you just copy and paste what you have like most days in a row because it's surprising how consistently you eat the same stuff. But keeping track of what triggers regular incidences of accidents and stuff is like, you just know and you remember because you write it down and you can look back like yesterday or the day before because you 
can like hardly think back usually to remember everything that you ate, you know, two days ago. Um, especially if you're trying to figure out if it was something that triggered you, you know, it's like have an accident or something. Um, so food log, if you eat something that messes with you, stay away from it. Be cautious of it. Maybe try a little bit if it's like your favorite thing. And, you know, if you can only have a little bit at a time, only have a little bit at a time. And, you know, weigh that cost benefit. If it's good enough to risk having a problem, do your thing. But if it's not, cut it out because it's the easiest thing to do is to just avoid stuff that makes you sensitive. The other yeah. thing that I switched to, which really helped me um, limit the accidents, was um, a regular fleet enema. And basically, it's just um, it's just saline solution. It's just regular um, normal solution, but it's a larger volume. I mean, it's just a regular fleet enema you can get anywhere at any you know, CVS or Rite Aid or whatever store. Um, it's super common, but um, the larger volume just like would allow me to like evacuate more consistently and more bad. Like I would not evacuate completely sometimes in the enemies and then a couple hours later I'd have a problem. Um, so switching to that allowed me to uh, do it with like, you know, handle my program with more consistency, like evacuate more completely. And that really like limited any issues that I had. And that being said, you know, sometimes like go out and drink, especially alcohol will do it if you like are a drinker. <laughs> Um, you know, if you just like get the hankering, you know, for a big cheeseburger and some french fries or whatever, like that can yeah. still trigger just like it does for anybody. Um, but it's the like the thing about it is, um, you know, you you learn your body. You know, you learn what works. You you learn to know better. And you know, like something happens every once in a while. It's not the end of the world. Um, you know, yeah. like it happens at home and you can just handle it really easily. You know, like it's it's okay. Um, you know, there are definitely harder and more embarrassing situations where, you know, it could happen. Those are the ones you really want to try to avoid. And, you know, I mean, if I have, like, a lot of stuff coming up, I mean, I will change my diet for the next couple of days. So, like, you know, I mean, if I'm getting ready to go away for a weekend in San Diego with my buddies and, like, I'm, not, I'm going to skip my care for a day or something, like, you know, I'll just fast for a day. And, you know, <laughs> limit with it. and it sounds crazy, but, you know, like, it's important enough for me to like avoid having an issue and allow me to like enjoy myself and be stress free and have a good time and you know like I can just sit there with my little snacks and you know like uh, keep my blood sugar levels okay and you know like be fine without you know uh, without it that sounds like kind of weird and wild but I mean like I gotta be no. honest with you know my techniques no dude I mean maybe for an able-bodied somebody that's not you know doesn't really know that does sound root weird and wild but to me like dude traveling for rugby and stuff all of us before we're going to go on the flight nobody's eating anything that's going to make you have the chance of having an accident on that flight yeah. like yeah. you're eating bananas you're eating exactly. anything that can constipate you before the flight like because that is the worst spot but besides that like but a lot of times for travel for other things for important events yeah sometimes you have to modify your diet a little bit and what sucks about that kind of stuff is like with me like i've had to do it several times where it's you know i've had to almost constipate myself a little bit which worked and I didn't have an accident, but then it was hard for me to like to go when I needed to because I backed myself up, you know, like I intentionally so did that's that. Like, that's the so, dance, right? That's the balance. It's like, yeah, that is. It's how like, do you ensure that like, you know, you're okay, but also, you know, not like not okay enough to still like, you know, have, be about your regular routine or, you know, like go when you need to so that like you don't have problems later on. like. Dude, exactly. You know, like, and th really those is. are really, and it really is a balance. It really is like trying to find it. And honestly, it sucks, but like your first couple years of your injury, you're probably going to have a lot of issues and accidents because it's just trying to find that balance and that routine, figuring what works for your body and what doesn't work for your body. You know, like it, it takes learning, you know, like it's going to take it's the experience, learning curve, just you know, like anything else. So it's like it, you have to experience it a few times. It sucks. There's no way around it, but that's just the life of it is, you know. Um, and yeah, you can't be afraid to pay attention to your body too. Right. You know, exactly. like listen to what it says, listen to how you feel. And like you were because saying with the journal, the time. journal is a great idea, man. Like that's, you have to listen, you have to like remember. And if you're not gonna remember, you have to note them down like you were saying, put them in a journal, make a food journal of what you've eaten, what like how your bowels went and stuff like, 
That's and yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, man. I'm on my phone 24 seven. Anyways, like it's the easiest <laughs> thing to do to pop into my notes and you know just like like take two seconds to write down what I just you know munched on. Yeah, dude, you can do it in your notepad. You can do it in your little calendar app if you need. There's like notes for days. Like you can do all kinds of stuff if you want. You know, like definitely so, easy enough on your about phone. Like minute, though. diet, man, because uh, that's a big part of this. Mm-hmm. What is your diet like? Do you, I mean, personally for me, I it sounds it sounds odd again, but it's just something I found works for me. I mean, I kind of do the intermittent fasting regularly. Like I'll do one like real meal a day, like around really? four or five o'clock. Like I do like lunch, dinner in between um and in the morning i usually do tea and granola a granola bar or something in that vein you know like a greek yogurt or something but outside of that you know a little snack maybe some chips or something in between if i'm feeling kind of low energy wise uh, but like my diet is what like that's the power i have right you know i don't have so much control or power over you know like Dark, you know, parts of my body that I, I can't communicate with anymore, but I can still, you know, control what I'm, you know, putting in my body, and that that helps, uh, at least me. Awesome, so, what's man. your what's your diet? Um, so I, <laughs> um, I don't I don't do fasting because for me, I'm like my metabolism's running all the time. I kind of need to keep. I snack a lot. Like I'm eating every couple hours, every few hours. I'm eating some sort of snack, something. Um, but for like my bowels, so I do fiber one bars to help my bowels. I do them like the mm-hmm. night before I usually, um, uh, before I do. So I do them like every other day I eat a fiber bar. Um, I also, you know, I try to do fruit smoothies in the mornings a lot of times because I've learned also from other people on nutritionist, you know, fruit smoothie, it's easier for your body to process and run through your system than like a whole big processed meal. Uh, so that's another thing I do to try to help, you know, keep things, going smoothly um and those of you who juice and don't smoothie smoothie like sean because that pulp that meat like in the fruit and the veggies that you're grinding yeah you gotta get all the pulp and stuff yeah that natural fiber is like what makes your body like okay so nice yeah smoothie instead of juice (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, not just juicers. Yeah, because I know there are people that do like the, and I'm sure some of that green juicing stuff does help. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there is, but like that natural plant fiber that you know, like your body digests and stuff, I, it has certain benefits that a lot of people take away when they juice instead of smoothie. But anyways, part of my side note. <laughs> no, that's good, dude. That's good. No, it's fan. And that's what I learned that from uh, one of my one of the guys that I play rugby with. He's the number two ranked hand cyclist in like the quad division right now in the country. Dude's Dell, you might know him. He's a super cool dude. But he's all about nutrition, fitness, health. Like the guy is hardcore. And he's the one that told me about that. And it wasn't for as it was partially for bowels, but he told me it like it really does help your digestion and bowels to do at least one meal a day as a smoothie, like as your morning one or whatever. It just kind of helps things go through. You get all that fruit pulp, you get the different nutrition. Plus it's just easier for your body to process and just kind of like for your intestines and bowels. So just a what cool, cool lunch. And then why is Benta Fiber? I take uh, two adult servings of Benta Fiber, which is just okay. wheat dextrin fiber. There are multiple brands, but it's not the Metamucil, like orange one. It's like the white powder that dissolves. Um, but it's wheat okay. dextrin fiber. And um, I do that in the morning, like first thing when I get up with my cup of tea or my cup of coffee, depending on what I have. Um, and that helps with like my consistency. Um, I found I used to do Miralax um, at night um, to like help facilitate me going better in the morning, um, but I, don't know, I found that it was causing more problems than it was helping. Um, but everybody's body is different, and honestly, it's really trial and error. But that's the thing that sucks because you know trial and error <laughs> means you're gonna fail sometimes, and those yes. errors are not so easy to deal with. Uh, exactly. And it's like a hard thing to just like try stuff and risk, you know. Yeah, no, for sure. No, definitely. Uh, it, it's <laughs> the trial and error part sucks. Trying to figure it all out sucks. But once you kind of can get it dialed in, you can sort of get a pretty good schedule and routine and and diet and stuff going and things. And uh, I forgot one of the things I was going to mention too earlier. So if I know I really have to like, like for rug, so a lot of times for rugby is when I haven't had to adjust my stuff. So like you know traveling. 
totally throws off timing, yeah. throws off your seating, it throws off everything, you know, like your diet, your all, all, all of it's different. Uh, and one thing I've noticed that does help me actually go is if I drink like one, at most two, like ale type beers the night before. <laughs> like those, it's like hot no beer joke, beers. Man. It really gets my bells going. And the next day I have a way better, like way easier time. Um, I just earlier, I, like alcohol so, will like cause uh, so. some. Uh, so that's some. That's one of the things I'll do a lot of times traveling is I'll go have a beer the night before to make sure it goes cool. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, another thing you got to be really careful with is this stuff right here. I'm not trying to you know advertise for Starbucks over here. I might be a slight addict. Um, no, but coffee is a big one that can also cause you to have issues um, if you're not careful. Like I yeah. know how much I can drink without having a problem. Um, you know, like I pretty much touch like one or two cups a day. Um, like more than that, like it could cause like my tummy to get upset. Um, but that's just part of noting these things, paying attention, you know, noting how the ale affects you, right? Whatever it's in there that, you know, causes that, right? Same with the coffee, same with whatever it is that you're, you know. Tom, I'm going to leave you to talk for just a second about this and I'm going to bring Bobby in real quick. Cool. All right, for sure. So yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're on your own right now for a second. All right. All right, you guys are stuck with me. Uh, one topic, you know, surrounding this, which I don't, like, I haven't seen really in, like, support groups and stuff seen talked about as much, which I've struggled with, is um, my reliance on a caregiver for this aspect of my care. I mean, I try to be as independent in my life as possible. And, you know, I'm quadriplegic, um, which, you know, means that I'm going to have to require assistance, you know, for certain things. Um but being bound to a routine where, you know, a caregiver has to show up and just see, like, I can get, uh, get myself dressed and get up in the morning, no problem, and go about my day. But if I skip my, you know, bowel care and, you know, risk having an accident later on, that can be hard for me. Um, but, you know, like having to travel with a caregiver because I can't independently do that part of my care on my own can be really, really difficult. Um, you know, I have to travel someone or not at all hey bobby hey how's it going pretty good boss how are you good how are you doing good man good just talking good, about good. uh the caregiving aspect of daily daily bladder bowel care ah <laughs> uh, the fun stuff i don't miss the fun stuff i don't miss i don't know about you but after a while when uh, you start thinking about doing a colostomy, it was it was the biggest game changer of my life. Well, so this is the perfect segue to that because I was just talking about how you know, like the freedom that it takes away from me when I want to travel. You know, like I either have to travel with a nurse or a caregiver or a family member who can help me, a friend or whatever. And that cannot always be the easiest thing. But if I just want to freaking go away for a weekend on my own, you know, I, I mean, I can't. Uh, I mean, maybe overnight, you know, if I'm careful with what I eat, take all these extra steps and precautions. And it's been hard. Uh, it's been really difficult for me. Now, I'm not, I'm not really at the stage where I'm ready to make that, make that change yet. But I mean, I'll be lying if I haven't said, you know, it hasn't crossed my mind. No. It, it takes a while. It, um, it takes a long time uh, to make that change. I, I fought it for good five years and probably even more. But the, the last five years, if I would have done it five years earlier, life would have been a lot different. I think my health would have been different uh, because of what happens. Hi, Sean. <laughs> we're recording are we live um oh yeah we're live. Live. yeah we're uh, okay live. hey guys <laughs> hey guys uh just jumping right in i know uh i know you had an order but we started jumping in and, and uh here's you know if i would have done it five years earlier my health would have been a lot better and the reasoning for that is uh, i wouldn't have gone to work exhausted I, I'm a person. I'm a morning person. I like to get it 
going in the morning. I like to not worry about it after work when I'm already tired from work. So I chose the other end that some other people choose to do it at night. I just always, uh, always chose early, the better. And it just felt like once I got that done, I am done. I don't, you know, if, if I know it's a, a, it was a bowel program day and I didn't do it in the morning, it would linger with me all day long. Like, yeah, okay, I know, yeah. I, <laughs> I know I got to do it. I'm not going to look forward to it. And it really starts to ruin your day. If you're a person that does it, let's just say eight o'clock at night, it, I, I, for me, it just ruined my day. Like around three o'clock, all I would be thinking is, Oh, I got to do it tonight. Oh, now my friend texts me. He wants to go out. Oh, now there's a show starting and my wife wants to watch it. You know, whatever it is, it was just like, ah. Oh. So I always chose the morning all my life. And uh, I and switched from night to morning for that exact reason. It worked better for me. And like my mom, who was my caregiver while I was at home, because she'd be up at 6 a.m., need to be at work by 6.30 or whatever. And it was just difficult. But I'm a morning person, and I want it done for the day. So my caregiver shows up at 5.30 a.m. Like, I'm up in my chair by 6.45, and I'm just, like, free to, you know, have the rest of the day myself. And it is so important for me to have that because my yeah. nighttime freedom is everything to me. Yeah, I'm the same as you guys. I like to get it done in the morning, be done, don't worry about it. But the issue I've had is if I have something I really need to do and I have done it in the morning, like if it didn't go the best, I'm still worried that something else might like slip out. <laughs> yeah. So Ab that, absolutely true. Issue. And and you got you gotta really trust your your done system, you know. I am I put in a lot of insurance over the years and I think that's what sort of made me more exhausted from bowel program because I put all those insurance in. I never, I'll put on, I'll put it on two, two hands because I want to be right about this. In, in 30 years, doing it in the morning of having something happen after the fact, after I was dressed and I'm on with my day of goofing around or work or whatever it was, I might have had maybe 10 accidents in 30 years. Wow. So, you know, I and got... You had a really consistent, regular yeah, that's program. Good. That's you know, good, I had yeah. a... I, I got lucky with a lot of things with Bell program. One, never had... A, so if the first six hours was over after Bell program, nothing was going to happen. No accidents. And I could not have an accident for... I don't care what I ate. I don't care what I drank. I don't care um, what it was. It was not going to happen until that suppository went back up there and started the whole whole cycle again. I got lucky. But the accidents came, and I, I had to be honest, maybe in two years out of 30, two times out of 30, maybe it was just like all of a sudden it was like, whoa, what was that, you know? I, I, you know who knows what that was you know but those were very odd out, out, you know for 30 years of but this stuff happens to everybody right I mean it happens yeah. to able-bodied people yeah, exactly and, and, uh, yeah, yeah you can have just something you know and I was thinking, but those two times I'm like did I eat something different I don't know well, that was weird but the, I got lucky I had a you know for a long time I did it twice a week and probably that was another problem I probably did on my body was uh, for a long time because it didn't matter if I did it every day. It didn't matter if I did it every other day. It didn't matter if I did it every third day. Um, it still took the same amount of time. Still See, took I, two hours. And I remember when I like, met you or for first talking, you told me that, that you were doing it every, like twice a week. And I remember thinking, that's you know, that's crazy. Like, wow, that's you know, like, that's. It, it I think I think in some ways it was a lot of that wrapped around playing quad rugby for so many years. Like, right? Me okay, too, I yeah. got to get on a this. I got to get on a system that works Monday mornings and Thursday mornings, and hope for the best, you know. And when I went to rugby 
uh, tournaments and they're they're feeding you uh, pizza, hot dogs, and chili. You're like, oh, dude, can we go get a salad? Like something, man. We need something else here. You Give know? me some fiber. And, yeah, you know, it was just like, and I know that was easy. And I met many rugby players that had bad moments at rug at quad rugby games. Oh yeah, no, like, it's... you can't eat that. You know. Yeah, and, yeah, and, we don't have. And to you're right; they don't. We don't the have the name, like... but. Yeah, and you know, it, you just have to be really careful about your diet. I, I bring my own fiber bars, and it's and there's only so much power bars and you know fruits and nuts that you can bring for two days or three days, and not let it either the fruit go bad or the vegetables go bad. But you do what you can. you and then at dinner when you all go out as a team, you're like, no, I'm not ordering the quesadilla, and you know. <laughs> guacamole you know you're ordering chipotle a, sauce and all those <laughs> yeah you, 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 no more sauce but you you take care of your body and it's not always easy it's, it's, it's and you it's, know I, it's it's not like eating not good food but it's just eating real food I've, i mean i can maybe count on one hand the you know at, like the times i've had issues um you know when i've been eating like home cooked stuff like real like you know, real vegetables, real stuff, real food, you yeah. know, versus like if I got in and out burger, you know, like for dinner that night and then like, hey, you know, I had in to and out a couple hours it's like, you know, uh, I mean, it's like, it makes, it just makes so much sense. So when I made that like switch, I mean, it's difficult because I mean, for me, I live alone. So, you know, cooking is not always the easiest thing. I do not always have the energy to, you know, spend two hours making a simple dinner for myself or, no, you know, whatever yeah, it yeah. is. But um, you know, like I meal prep on Sunday, so I have my leftovers, like a pop in the microwave and, you know, heat up, like, you know, some veggie stuff, some rice, whatever it is. But setting myself up to have real food around to eat versus, you know, rolling to a fast food place or rolling over to campus and getting, you know, whatever cheap food they have there, Uber eats something, you know, whatever. Right. Um, but, it, but, all those, but all those choices that you, you named, there are good choices there. McDonald's, yeah. you can get a great choice. You can get an order their small sal salad with a chicken breast sandwich. And you know what? Eat only half of the bun. You know, there are ways to go fast food and Uber Eats yeah. on a very healthy. It Does it sound good when you're thinking about, you know, something you know, like Chipotle? Yeah. Chipotle. I want a filet of fish, Bobby. I don't want yeah. a salad from McDonald's. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> blame you, man. When you when you go to McDonald's, trust me, I want a Big Mac. Yeah, fish, that's the hard part is trying to eat healthy when you go. Those but are the decisions that, you have but to make. You, but when you limit it to your only option, like you said, well, okay, Fridays I can have filet of fish but Saturday and, you know, whatever it is, the other days I have the other stuff you know and i go that's to, the I thing go to anything is okay in moderation right but you know some things are not okay in excess and very often you know you go and get a big fat cheeseburger and you know a side of french fries you know big bowl of chili like you know it's a portion that's probably not a normal size and i think what we're trying to say to instead of us talking to each other what we're trying to say out there in youtube world is I, I think it's all balance and what we're what you put in your body is what's going to intake out and you have to be, really be careful and it's it's a headache and it's a pain in the butt but some people don't have to worry about it and some people have to worry about it a lot and everybody knows who they are when they fit in that category and once it's it seems like once that system is laid down uh, which way you are, who can eat whatever, or who cannot eat whatever, you'll just you'll figure it out. And you know, I feel bad for the ones that are like, I can't eat pizza, I can't eat this, I can't eat that, I can't eat that, and I can't eat that. Everything else is, eh, it's okay. And and then some people are like, it doesn't matter. You you, I can eat a stick of butter and nothing will happen. You know, yeah, like, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't in my twenties. I just. It seemed like I could eat pretty much everything and anything, and like I would occasionally have, you know, I'd have like those rare accidents or like be constipated, but like it never seemed like I had very 
like I didn't have issues all the time. Like I had, you know, occasionally here and there. But as I've gotten older, I've noticing now uh, things are touchier. Like I have to pick and choose my diet a little more. I have to, I have to be smarter about what I'm doing, eating, and things like. Because um, I used to be one of those guys that just I didn't, I didn't eat whatever. I didn't care. <laughs> Wait until you're about 50, Sean. It <laughs> changes even more, man. <laughs> um, like, I, yeah. I, you, you, you said something uh, that uh, I cannot eat them in and out now. No? I mean, Tom, sorry. Uh, I cannot eat a in and out. I, I just still, it doesn't sit well with me. There's, I, I don't know if it's the sodium in the buns or it's just, oh, I'm just like, I, I, One thing I can't do anymore is red meat. I mean, I will try like sometimes, like on you know, on occasion, like I eat cheeseburger, but um, you know, like I can't do a steak. Like even carne asada is hard for me. You know, like any kind of like beef. I don't know what it is, but like I never really used to have an issue with it. But now, whenever I eat it, like I always like an hour or two later, I'm just like, Ugh, and then my my stomach like is just not happy. And it never used to be like that, but you know. 20 years like your body changes hey guys actually we got um uh wheel life is in the chat and asked he actually asked if anybody has a colostomy um and if we thought of having it done so bobby uh we kind of we kind of did mention it just a little but, bit yeah. earlier but we kind of uh, digressed if, there a if you want to touch on that a little work. bit um yeah if you want to mention mm -hmm. anything else yeah you know so we were starting to talk about it and I've been paralyzed for 31 years. Uh, I wish I would have done it five years ago. I actually did it a year and a half ago. And the reason why I went to it was not for the easy reasons. That was the, that's the worst thing is once I had the colostomy, everything else was so easy. Meaning, um, you don't, you don't have to get the, you know, all the, the stuff out, the gloves, the, the suppositories, the chugs, and the where where's it going, and you know over the toilet and on the commode, all this stuff. And I wish I would have thought it for the easy reason. The reason why I did colostomy was I was just I felt like I was full all the time. So then I started going every other day, and then I was going every day, and I never felt like I was completely empty, and. I just couldn't take the pain anymore. The bloating, the air would just sit in my stomach and I would try to lean over left, right, forward, anywhere where I can get air to escape me. And it just went like the best, the best place was air to escape me was transferring into my car. Like I would tell my wife, wait outside until I transfer. <laughs> You're gonna hear a rip roaring fart here. You know that was the only way I can get air out of me. It seemed like, and so finally I just couldn't take it anymore. I went to a a couple surgeons that um, that do these kind of things. Uh, one I was gonna go to a great guy at UCI, but he was kind of uh, known in the name of of stomachs and. Uh, um, and the reason why we had his name and another guy's name is because my daughter's dealt with a lot of stomach issues and has a ileostomy, which is a little bit different. Ileostomy is someone that loses their colon. Mm -hmm. Colostomy is everything's intact. It can be reversible for anybody that's interested in like, okay, I want to try it, but if it doesn't work, is it reversible? Yes. It is. I did not know that. So that's good. To yeah. Know. So that's that's something to know. Like you're like, mm, this is gross. This is this is too close to home. It's only you know, for my eyesight now, I see it. You know, and at first I was like that. At first I looked down and I'm like, oh my god, it's right there. Oh, this is so gross. Um, but it does beat out the grossness of my nurse coming over every other morning and just putting her finger up my you know my bunghole. And it's just like, okay, this is way less. This is my dignity feels back intact again. So okay. I found a surgeon um, who said, I just asked him, like, would you do my surgery? I'm just never comfortable. And can you help me out? And he goes, sure. Um, if that, you know, we want you to be comfortable, 
And I said, do you, have you ever done anybody who just asked for it? And he goes, no, but your insurance will cover it because you show sign of pain, discomfort, and, um, and your diagnosis of being a quadriplegic. And so I did this surgery a week later. And at first I was like, what did I do? For maybe like a week. Like, try, like your body, it was almost like a, you know, my body had to do a restart, like your computer. Like the first time when you do a real hard boot and the first time it's loading, you're like, uh oh, did I screw something up? And then everything's starting to work fine. Well, that's how it was on, you know, the first couple, pu- um, the bag full of whatever, like, oh my God, that is so vile. And uh, just trying to get used to it. But after a year, it's, You know, especially like now through this COVID-19, my nurse, you know, uh, my gal that was helping me out, she, um, you know, she wanted to be protected of myself, who is at high risk and herself. And so right now she's not here. So we both decided, you know, okay. And that put my wife in a kind of a bind to help me out on some of these things, but it's not as bad. So we're like, whoa. I'm so much, I'm so much better off. I have this cost me instead of my wife doing it, you know, dignity wise. So that was a like, Ooh, okay. And then kind of what we started talking about Tom is a, um, uh, traveling. Now when I travel, it's just like, Oh my God, I don't have to lug all this stuff around. You know, I'm thinking like, okay, I'm on travel day two times. How many gloves, how many chugs, how many this, how many that? So I bring my commode chair for, you know, it, it's just another b- big piece of something to, you know, so it, and especially on the kind of traveling we do, we only do weekend trips. So, you know, so if I have to skip a shower, I skip a shower, I just wash up in bed, but I don't have to drag around this big old uh, commode chair on the, on the plane or in the car or, uh, a transfer I'm not used to because it's a travel one too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like what my um, parents used to do uh, when we go camping because we go on like four or five day camping trips, and sometimes I just skip a morning because like I didn't eat much the day before. I just felt fine, and like I felt like I could just go another day, and I just get up and do my thing. Um, but for our like mobile commode chair, they took one of those like just fold out like lawn, uh, not like a lawn chair, but like uh, you know you take like a sporting event or something. It's just like like pops out or whatever and they just cut a hole in it like you know my mom <laughs> sewed some like good cloth on it and it just pulled it it didn't even look like anything um you know what i do for my routine right now i do like a daily routine a daily style program and it's a lot like i will not um paint a pretty picture because it's really hard to get up every day like you said spend one to two hours taking care of that stuff now my program is my nurse comes in i do like my I empty my bladder, you know, I go, like, I do my bowel program, and then take a shower right after. Most quads do not shower every day. Like, uh, that's, you know, what I've come to learn. Um, because it's a hassle. It's, like, tough to get in the Hoyer if you, you know, get in your shower chair, you know, like, do whatever it is you have to do. Um, you know, like, it used to frustrate me all the time because of how long it took. I've been really fortunate enough, like, over the last few years to find some really good nurses um that are awesome and like i mean my mom nobody does my um you know care better than my mom you know who is also a nurse but you know she just has done it forever and just knows you know everything really well i mean she can help me out with my care in an hour in and out up you know start the day shower everything um you know then i would i moved out and i would have new nurses really consistently it wasn't two hours it was two and a half hours, it was three hours, because, you know, as someone who was unfamiliar with how to move me, you know, how to do this kind of care. Um, so, if you, if the colostomy is not, like, an option for you, or just something that you are, an idea that, you know, like, for me, it's not what I want to do right now in my life, and I don't know, I'll get to a point where I want to consider it. There are ways, I think, to manage your care I would daily or every other day it's just takes time to dial it in and make it work and smooth out the you know kinks and I mean like one of the hardest things for me is 
there's nothing worse than like having a significant other over and you know like they spend the night right you gotta wake them up in the morning and be like hey you might yeah. get out for an hour because my nurse is about to show up and help me with like my bowel care like you know interrupting that space interrupting you know that like intimacy and stuff like that can be really really hard but you know yeah. like you got plans that day and you know like you, it's hard to skip your bowel care too you know as much as you don't yeah. want to interrupt that space and you know it's just the give and the take um there's not like lots of not easy parts and you know you do your best to make make it work and make it easy and you know like i found a routine which you know like i've really been considering changing as a way um but you know right now it works for me and it's good and you know like there are hard parts about like you know there are hard parts about everything and it's really kind of just cost benefit analysis in your mind you know like what 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 you're comfortable with what works for you you know like dignity wise health wise and you know uh, a bunch of other factors too. Yeah, I'm I think sure. that's the most important. Most important, keep what works best for you, unless it changes. Like if you notice more accidents, if you notice not the quite, you're not quite feeling right. Look at what you're doing. Is it food you're eating? Is it the time you're doing it? Is it you know? Look at some certain things. You know, like am I getting older? I think that was one of my things. I was just getting older. What were you gonna say, Sean? I'm sorry. Uh, I was gonna say, yeah, I'm kind of like, I switched from the Monday, Wednesday, Friday to every other day about a year ago, and I'm still having issues. I'm still trying to figure things out, still trying to like factor things in. Um, I'm not quite to the colostomy, but I'm, but after talking to you and stuff, it is more prevalent on my mind. Like I'm now, like it's something that's like, I've weighed on a little bit more, you know, um, and I'll still continue to weigh on and think about my options and stuff. But yeah, I mean, like I, I was just talking to Tom briefly before we actually went live, but I've been having, I've actually gone the last three days in a row because I was really constipated for a while. Couldn't go, had a terrible time, like terrible one on Sunday. So I was like, screw it. I have to try it again. Still wasn't feeling good. So I tried it, went again today. Like, still don't feel great, but hoping I'm okay. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's hard to find that balance. And then when is the time to, you know, make the change and how to make the change and stuff. And uh, Sean, you're doing, you're doing it yourself. Is that correct? Yeah, well, I have help. Yeah, I have help. Um, okay. Yeah, I have somebody help me with the suppository. I can do okay. it myself. I can insert it. It's just... A yeah. pain and it's no. a little, I end up it, breaking it's like, like every it's other one. Thing, one. It's one thing with quads. You, you figure out how to do it once, and then you realize that's going to be a lot of work. Okay, yeah. let's let's get some. Like, I always had somebody come in for my bell program and my showers, and it was because it was just too much. Yeah, it would, it, it would wipe my. You know, I could do it. There's some guys out there bless their hearts you know we got a good friend mikey probably does it himself. yeah mike does it you know yeah. yeah yeah and then you know be like he's our he's our king you know uh, um you know doing in so many more independent stuff at oh, his he, level mike you know with no trying that, that can be like a little security blanket because it's something like the last couple of years i've tried to do is like you know i mean i know it's going to take longer and it's going to be harder but knowing that i can take care of it or handle it you know as long as like as difficult as it might be just knowing that if i'm in a situation where i needed to i could you know that gives me a certain peace of mind that you know yeah. like yeah it's meaningful always dressing myself and undressing myself when i was in my single days it doesn't have it as much because you know she's right there she's wanting to go to bed and get up as just as quick as i do so it, you know i do have a lot more help but in my young days yeah i, I was always happy that I can do that. The other part I just, you know, and Tom, that's awesome if you're doing it on your own. I I, mean, I, I don't because, I mean, it's just too much work and like it's so much crap. Yeah, yeah. So much but crap. I'm saying, you know, I, I have tried and, you know, knowing that I can. But I want to reassure people it's, out there that if you can't do it, there are way powerful ways to travel and I did this almost when the internet was starting up, you know, I was around before the internet and I, <laughs> I, you know, when the internet was, you know, 
still a hamster on a on a reel going around as fast as it can go dial up i found nurses in other states i i, I traveled to you know for work and i went to atlanta twice i went to north carolina a handful of times new orleans and i found my own nurses by just you know nur- nurses that do this and you know the search that i used to get before i think maybe google was just starting but it was just like okay hey i'm coming out of town do you do this uh no click you know i do you know i'm coming from out of town would you come to my hotel and do this and they're like well so you need a nurse so tell us more about this i'm like i need you one time okay we just need a doctor script you know okay call my doctor you know she's like okay whatever what do you need me to you know doctors are like well tell me what i need to tell me what's right exactly yeah you know that's crazy, Bob. Over and I didn't know you didn't used to do that because that's what I did for years, but I used Craigslist once it was like on. I would go to the city where I was going, post an ad on Craigslist. I'm going to need a caregiver on this day from this time to this time. Like I would do like a four or five hour window, post my ad. I'd get a several email replies. I'd find one that seemed like they were okay. I'd pay them like 10 bucks an hour and I'd have my caregiver. The rest of the weekend I would do my own thing, but I had my bowel and and, and shower help and then they went yeah. on their way and but that's crazy i never yeah. knew you did that bobby that's awesome i thought yeah, i was no, like it was, it was, <laughs> no <laughs> it was before craigslist but i did that yeah that's there cool. was only one time i got into one like she came like i i got a, even a gal like because i had to be out the door so early and i'm like okay so they i said i need somebody for five days it was a big conference in atlanta and it was, you know, I said on the fourth, third day, I'm going to need somebody for BP. And they're like, okay, so because of the other thing, we're going to send out an aid. But for your BP, we're going to send out an LVN. I'm like, okay. So the the first few, two days, I had this awesome, this gal would just like, she's like making me coffee in my room. And like, just really like, we got along like, she was like, oh, I, I, you know, I mean, of course she was married at the time. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I wasn't at the time. And I'm like, of course, somebody I'm like, Jones and I'm like, just, we're having like the best conversations in the world, you know? And then I'm like, are you here tomorrow? And she goes, oh no, they bring in another gal. And I go, oh yeah, I remember. That gal comes in for the BP. She's like, oh no, I'm not doing that. And I'm like, I just told her flat out, I said, if you don't do it, I die. Do you want me to call your agency? They send you out. I had somebody better than you for two days. You're an LVN. You're doing this. And then, like, right? They send a CNS, like, willing people, and then they send yeah. an LVN. Like, I'm out. Yeah. Oh, and then, man. so the, um, uh, so she's like, okay. She, she starts it, and I get a little bit of results. She's all like, are we done? I'm like, oh no, we're not dead. Oh no, we're, we're going to be here for a while. You know, because when I did it in other cities, on the bed, it, it was. A mess. Know, it, it, yeah, no, that's hard. It took a lot, it took a lot longer. Yeah. Hey, hey guys. Uh, so, so we uh, actually yeah. got quite a few questions in the chat, and since we're getting kind of later in time, i was just going to go through a couple of yeah. them for you. I got a couple for you, Bob, too. Um, so before the surgery for the colostomy, did you need to do like a clean out? Did they have to have you do like a... Uh, uh, That's a great question. Whoever asked, uh, asked that question, that is the number one question. So I was really worried about that too. What my wife found out through um, on her Facebook group, uh, she follows a Wise and Girlfriends page. They Somebody told her about um, doing it at the hospital. And there's a code for Medicare to do that. And so basically I checked in the night before surgery and then they have someone come up from the ER and stick a catheter up your ass <laughs> and you drink this stuff and it all goes right into the bag. I didn't have to sit on a can. I didn't have to sit on a commode. It was all done in the hospital with somebody watching it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, awesome. there is. And I, I forget what the the code is for that. As you're asking your next question, I'll yell it out to her and see if she remembers what that exact 
procedure is called. All right, cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, sorry, I'm just going through. Um, some of them are more just comments of that w they were just starting to add up a lot. <laughs> yeah, trust is huge. A lot of people talk about, uh, do I have a caregiver? Uh, right now I have my grandma that helps me out with the few things I need help with, and she's basically my acting caregiver. I don't have anybody else that's helping me with stuff. Um, ever tried enemies? Yes, enemies is what Tom uses, um, right? I use, not or, anymore. Or not anymore. Uh, yeah, I use the fleet enema, but yeah. Um, I've actually tried them as well. I tried them for like a month. I bought like a pack of a hundred of them and they just didn't work as well for me. Uh, Bobby, I don't know if you That's ever tried those. one thing that is like, I think important to note about enemies and all bowel care supplies, they're not covered by the insurance. Mine is not, you know, like the enemies that I have to purchase, you know, like I Amazon every month or whatever. Like I'm pretty sure suppositories, are suppositories covered for you guys? Uh, yeah, you get, yeah. I think it's 50 well, a month for Medicare. When I was doing the enemies, they were not covered, at least not by my insurance. And, you know, it's like $100 a month on, you know, like a pack of 30 of them or whatever. And I think the cost has gone down since. But, you know, it's still something like they don't cover fleet enemas for me. And, I mean, I've tried to get them covered. Um, and even, you know, gloves, regular supplies. Um, so, I mean, it's really, I think, something important to you know, into consideration, too. Yeah, it um yeah definitely for that and then uh sorry one last uh one last question for bob uh, was just uh the healing time like how long was the recovery after the uh surgery what was the last so question? i stayed in the hospital so after the surgery i stayed in the hospital for two more days uh basically they keep you in the hospital and make sure your bowel restart kind of like a computer um next thing first thing i got was a bowel sound and then they had me eat soft food and then I got to go to solid which was like some chicken and mashed potatoes and then once they knew everything was working they sent me home and going home was pretty nervous I was pretty pretty much a nerve wrack uh, because I didn't feel like I got a lot of training and I haven't talked to anybody I've converted five people to do the surgery or four people you would be number five Sean <laughs> if you do it um, and we've all felt like it, you know the you just didn't have enough training you don't know what appliances to use uh, they give you a sample pack of Hollister and Colaplast you're trying each patch out you don't know like the bag the bag sound is like oh my god it's so it's it's so noisy. Then it was the I'm going church now. I'm not going at all. You know, it took a while. I would say, kind of like when I first got hurt, it took about a couple months to where like, okay, things are okay. I'm not going enough. So basically, when I got to, I was somebody that might be like you, um, Sean, and something you might want to think about just with your diet. Um, Metamucil. Until I started taking probiotics, probiotics is the healthiest thing for our system. With a colostomy or not, you need probiotics in your stomach. Uh, it will kill so many things that happen in our stomach and will help our immune system and it will just clean everything out much better. So always, I'm a big promoter of probiotics. I drink my probiotics by kombucha it's a high probiotics one and um it's a nasty tasting you know uh drink but i knew it and since i did that and Marilette, um i've been uh, it's great i don't you know there's some people that hear a lot of sounds out of their stoma where it makes like you, it sounds like you're just farting from your stomach i don't get that i have a buddy that does get that I feel bad. He's just like, yeah, oh, just like I can't get rid of it. And I don't know what the difference between him and I are, but everybody is different when you do something like this. But I have found that I change. I do a one piece bag. I change it uh, every morning, 
unless that I'm about to go lay down and I see stuff in there. Um, so then I'm like, oh, this is too much. We change it. So I change it once to twice a day. And that's it. And I change the wafer that sticks to my skin um, uh, twice a week to and three times do, a week, uh, depending on how it's. Can you do a lot of the little basic maintenance and care yourself, or do you require you, you do? Um, to change the bag bag, um, to change the whole wafer and everything? I need a little bit of help, yes. Um, could I do it myself? I know I could do it myself. Okay. If I got everything ready, I could easily do it. Cool. Yeah, that's one of those things. Like, And somebody also asked before if I do my own suppositories. It's a question we were kind of all talking about. Like. I can and I figured it out but I don't do it regularly just like all of us like we've pretty much figured out how to do all these things because you want to know how to do these things if you need to but some of the stuff is really hard and time-consuming to do so and, and can just be done easier and more sterilely possibly by having a little help so it's just nice to yeah. nice to have that <laughs> absolutely um, I think that was about all the main question questions. If there was any others that I missed, sorry guys. If I was trying to scroll through. We had quite a few comments, people saying hi, people, a lot of positive feedback for you guys. Hi everybody, thanks Mason, for tuning in. Mason Yu says hi Bobby. Yeah, I think. Part of the shitty topic. It is, <laughs> <laughs> it is a pretty shitty topic. <laughs> You know, it's the topic nobody wants to talk about, but probably the one people need to hear about most because yes. it, you know, has one of the largest impacts on your life. I mean, I and just you said at the beginning, I could overcome, you know, and I have overcome any part of my disability, you know, like, and I don't want to say with ease, but like now living my life, like, I don't think about anything really with regards to my disability or like what it means to like go about my life, but my bowel care, my bowel program is still one it hits me sometimes yeah. when I don't have a you know good program or I do have an accident or something. It's something that I still struggle like with 23 years later. And if I could fix any one part of my disability and just stick with the rest forever, it would probably be that because it just 100%. you know like it can be to deal with you know the whole dignity you know part of it and stuff. And you know it's just spent a lot of time like changing my mind too. You know like not shutting down every time I had an issue. You know, it's like that saying, if I don't have a, you know, great program in the morning, you know, like, it, I used to let it ruin my day. I'd worry all day long. And it's really hard to shut off those, you know, those anxieties and that little voice in your head that says, you know, like, oh, you're going to have an issue. So you're going to have a problem. Like, it's going to happen. But, you know, through years and years and years, you know, like, I learned to not let, you know, one small part of my day dictate the rest of my day, um, you know. Um, moving past it, if it happens, it happens. I will deal with it the best I can in the moment. You know, I can prepare, you know, for bring an extra change of clothes, you know, bring extra supplies with me and stuff, like if I'm going to be out, if it, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but, you know, learn to deal with it in a way that doesn't let it ruin your day, doesn't let it ruin, you know, stuff. Because at the end of the day, it's pretty insignificant. It's something that every human has to do on planet Earth, you know. And, you know, as hard and embarrassing as it can be to deal with, it's, you know, once you deal with it, once you get it done, once you get over it, it's nothing. It's like in the past, it's done. Exactly. Um, so, it's, it sucks in the moment, but once you're done and get it kind of cleaned up and whatever figured out, it's just go upon your life, you know, go upon your day and life goes on. <laughs> so. Yeah, flip that and get back in much. those moments, you know. Shit happens and life goes on. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I guess that's probably a pretty good wrap for. I think we covered most, and I don't want to go too far over the uh, hour mark. We don't want to keep people uh, too too long on here. <laughs> but uh, Bob and Tommy, uh, Tom, Bobby and Tom, <laughs> Tommy, Bob, whatever, it works no the same worries. way for both of you no guys. No worries. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah dude thank you guys both for coming on and good advice you know I you guys have experiences that I don't have and awesome to share with everybody and I know a lot of people got a lot of help from it we had a lot of comments a lot of, a lot of good reactions and stuff 
So hopefully, well, thank you, Sean, people. for putting this thing together and you know, yeah. sharing that information because it is so important that people out there who aren't getting this from the hospital or anybody else, you know, have somewhere to get it, you know, if they are inclined right. to look for it. So thank you, man, and thank you everybody for tuning in and watching. And Don't I forget to subscribe put, um, and both, like and hit yes, that little like, bell subscribe. to get the notification. And I'm gonna put both video. of your guys' Instagrams in the thing, so as long as that's okay with you, in case if anybody wants to you know, have, yeah. have any questions, follow up questens or anything for you. Uh, yeah, so those will be in the description if you guys want to contact so Tom message, or Bobby. You know, it's like you do have really serious questions and, you know, just information. Um, both Sean and I and Bobby were ambassadors for, you know, the Triumph Foundation. And that's what we like to do is spread good information and help people that, you know, need it or have a hard time getting it. So exactly, don't be shy. Just if, we, if, if, if it becomes too many questions, sometimes it's like, oh, Okay, wait, hi. I got another uh, 100 I people to answer so just No, no. Yeah, you know, I know. At, the, at the end of the day, you know, at the very least, you know, we can put you in the right direction where to go get more. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, all right. Thanks, everybody. All right, great job. It's been a good great broadcast. Job, John. Thanks, guys. I'm going to end the broadcast real quick. You guys, live to roll, fist bump. Bye, everybody. All right, bud. <laughs>